Well, love having you guys here today. We are going to do a, a different kind of web class where you're going to, it's going to really be audience participation to give you an opportunity to really ask the deep questions and really get into what's going on in your world and what might be stopping you in protecting yourself. Well, one of the things that stops people in protecting themselves is the age old, you don't know what you don't know. And the truth is that a lot of people don't realize how important it is to create a privacy, an asset protection, a probate avoidance, and a profits opportunity. Um, and so as a result, they don't do anything. And then all of a sudden there's a knock at the door and there's a challenge that uh, you weren't anticipating. Uh, obviously as entrepreneurs, we're in business and in business, you have the chance of being sued. And if you are sued, the question becomes, what are you going to do about it? Uh, are you in that world? Have you uh, opted into that world? And did you allow yourself to be opted into that world, which is a whole other world, <laughs> a whole other thing to learn? I'm admitting as I'm talking to you here, there's a lot of people coming in. A dark world, Richard says. <laughs> yes, it's a it's a dark, challenging world that uh, can be avoided. That's the other thing I like to share with people is, goodness gracious, we don't have to do this. Uh, but we do have to learn the rules. We have to learn what is a challenge that uh, all of us could be facing and probably will be facing. The odds are, if you're in the real estate game, sooner or later, somebody's going to take a run at you. Why? Why is that? Because people have observed the system. They've observed that they can win at the game of lawsuit lottery, right? And so in the lawsuit lottery game, they have, uh, you know, a 50-50 chance of winning. And that's a pretty darn good chance. I mean, it's a lot better than a lottery, isn't it? Because <laughs> the lottery, you know, one in a million or a billion that you're going to win. But heck, in a lawsuit lottery, the odds are a lot better. So I've definitely been the victim of that. And I say victim because we do good business and we do very great things and great works in our community. We change a lot of people's lives. We give them solutions if they're sellers. We give them solutions if they're lenders. And we give them solutions if they're buyers or renters. So the services that we provide to the community are great. So if someone wants to take a run, well, it's only because they're trying to win at the game of lawsuit lottery. So the question becomes, what is it that we can do how can we operate in a different realm, so to speak, and uh, have our cake and eat it too? Uh, so number one, you've got to get your name off public records. In other words, anything that you own in your name, and let's be interactive here, how many of you have assets in your own name? And that means real estate, that means vehicles, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, bank accounts, anything that's in your own name that is at risk. And so when it's at risk, you really have to, well, first of all, you have to know that it's at risk to begin with. You have to, you know, it's, it's sort of like uh, you have to admit that there's a problem before you can allow for a solution to come in. And so that's the game that uh, unfortunately people are playing against us. You might've been raised that having assets in your name was a valuable thing and an exciting thing and something that you want to, to create in your world because goodness gracious, if you've got assets in your name, you're getting ahead in this world. You're, 
you're taking advantage of what God has created and the opportunities that present themselves to everyone that everyone can take advantage of. But if you didn't actually do something about it, then somebody else can come along and not do all you did to get what you've got. They can just get what you've got. So the real opportunity is to do something about it. And that's likely why you join me today. Uh, so we've already established that many of you have assets in your own name. And that's the first criteria really is to get assets away from you. You want to divide and conquer, not have anything in your own name. Now, the next thing is, well, if that is what there is to do, and I've bought into that concept, then how do you do it? So let's start with the reasons for getting things out of your name. Let's uh, open it up and all of you can participate in this. You can come off mute and just share. What is it? What would be the reason that you would want to have assets out of your name? Privacy. Privacy. So Dave says, I don't want other people to know what I've got. Is that right, Dave? Yep. Now, why would that be? Uh, it's none of their business. <laughs> that is true. That is true. It's none of their business. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's no one's business what you own uh, and how much you have. And in fact, mm -hmm. it's not a positive thing to really let people know what you have because on the other side are folks that, again, don't want to do what you did to get what you got. They just want yeah. what you got. Yeah, target. So you become a target and unfortunately you have made yourself a target only because you didn't know any better right and that's really what they do uh, obviously is to have you go down a certain path and you know psychologically having things in your name is a good thing until somebody comes for what you've got <laughs> and then it's a super bad thing uh, you know, one of the great things about trusts is it separates you from the assets. You, it's, it's a legal separation of you from the assets. So that legal separation, and it's a, it's a solid dividing line. There's you, and then there's your assets. And if you are with your assets. If they are in your name, then they can get through you to your assets. But if you separate that and you create a you that's only you, and then you create assets in a separate name because you don't own them anymore, legally, you don't own them anymore. Legally, it's not you. Legally, it's the trust and the trustee that owns that asset. They own it, not for themselves, but for the benefit of someone or someone's to come. And so that separation of you from the assets is a very, very important legal step to get people away from you. <laughs> And actually to have you not look like a fat, juicy, ripe tomato, right? That they just ripe for the picking and taken away. So they look up your name and they don't find anything. And they don't find anything because you don't own anything. And that's legal, moral, and ethical. So uh, who else wants to share why it would be a good idea not to have assets in your name? So Dave shared privacy being one. Well, Lou, I, I got a story. I think I haven't shared with you, but I think it would be really good for this conversation. Okay. Richard, welcome. I Thank you. Thank you. Obviously, I'm one of your star students. I got started using your paperwork back in 96. 
Okay. And but I also got paperwork from other people. So I combined all this paperwork together to to build a multi-million dollar real estate business using doing exactly the creative financing and the creative investing strategies uh, that you teach because what you teach is exactly how to do it. Okay. So now I do good business. I have high integrity. I didn't think anybody would ever come after me. So I use your paperwork I, because you have the best paperwork, absolutely hands down. So I use your paperwork for buying and selling and doing rent to own and owner financing. Actually, I used another set of paperwork for for some of my installment land contracts in Colorado and someone else's trust documents. Now, I lost a six million dollar portfolio in 2015. I lost every 56 properties from a frivolous, you could call it a frivolous government lawsuit. And if the government comes after you, the only reason they'd come after you is because your name's on public record. Here's what I did wrong. I put all of my all of my properties would go into a land trust, right? Because of what I've learned from you, right? But I was the trustee and my company was the beneficiary and they so they look up my name on public record and they see thousands of transactions and they say all these properties and I became a target and I thought no one would ever sue me I just thought it would never happen I think that's the biggest mistake because someone who does good business like you and as you know you can get sued for anything and the and the stupid thing that I did is I had my name all over public record and I would go out and teach real estate investors my marketing, what I do in my business and brag about all the properties that I own, <laughs> right? That's a, <laughs> so yeah, don't let, you don't want anybody to know what you own. <laughs> and I also didn't use your uh, prop, your, I didn't put my stuff in uh, personal property trusts like you taught. They, my house was in my name and my wife's name. And even though the, the lawsuit was against my company because I was a sales rep representative for my company as a registered uh, securities dealer, so I could broker private money in my early part of my business, they actually took the deed un unlawfully from my wife. They, they could kind of do it from me, but they couldn't do it from my wife, but they did it anyways. You don't, there's not enough money to fight a government lawsuit. So uh, the time to set this up is now and then keep it, keep everything out of your name. Get your name off public record, just wow. exactly how you instruct and then keep it off of public record. Every time you get a new asset, every time you own things, I mean, again, your bank account, your car, your home, everybody owns stuff. All of that is is at risk. Everything you own is at risk if it's in your name. Amen. And not only not only do you teach the trust, but you also teach the advanced strategies behind, you know, who's the beneficial interest and all that. And wow. so Richard, thank you so much for sharing that. That is a powerful story and uh, you know, obviously extremely challenging when you're the one that lived it and lives it as a result of what happened. Uh, it should be a wake up call for every one of you to realize you it, don't know when, you don't know where, you don't know what. And I, I did nothing wrong. I do good business. And it, it was only because they knew I had a lot of assets. And even though it was all bogus, they still, because of the process that they use during a lawsuit, you, when there's a lawsuit, nobody wins except the attorneys, right? And that type of thing. You just, you just, you want to avoid it. And then, so once you avoid it, and then you want to have the confidence if you are targeted, it's like, okay, I'm ready to play this game because I'm already protected. Amen. You know, it's one of the things, and, uh, you know, I was forced by the government to learn about trusts. When they changed the law, I was already 
smoking and rolling, buying property by taking over existing financing. Back in the day, they had the NENQ loan, non escalating, non qualifying loans. So for $45, you could step in and take over somebody else's financing. It was awesome. So if they were 15 years into a 30 year loan, boom, you just step into year 15 of that amortization and continue to pay it. And it was great. And then they, passed the Garn St. Germain Federal Depository Institutions Act of 1982. And all of a sudden, the rug was pulled out from under us. And we were told, you can't do that anymore. And I said, well, now, hold on. Why not? And they said, well, you know, now the banks have the right to put the due upon sale clause in the mortgage. And so as a result of that, you can't play anymore. And it's like, what? What do you mean I can't play anymore? So I decided to read the law. And what did I find? Way down deep in there were exceptions. And one of the exceptions is when you place your property into trust, essentially for estate planning purposes, the lender is prohibited from calling the loan due. The word prohibited is in there. So it's like, wow, I, I like that prohibited thing. <laughs> and so I, I need to learn about trust because that's the only thing that allows me to continue to play in this arena without having restrictions because banks restrict the number of deals you can do. They say you are at risk. You are a risk. If you're doing multiple deals, we want to, we, we'll let you have one or two. We'll let you have four, but we don't want you to have a lot of properties. So that's exactly what happened in that arena where they came and they, they said, okay, we're going to try to constrict this part of the economy. And we're going to say there's a, a few of you can have a little bit better life than everybody else, but not a great life like you could have if you didn't have these constructions and restrictions. So I said, okay, well, let me just learn about these trusts. And sure enough, it was that avenue that got me to discover the most amazing entity on the planet, bar none. So whether you've heard of LLCs or corporations or limited partnerships, it means nothing compared to trusts. So you do a side-by-side -side comparison and I've got 30 more benefits on my side on top of what you could have using LLCs, corporations, or limited partnerships. So in other words, we are able to, you know, 30X, you know, the, the few benefits that you may get from using those other entities. And so when I started discovering what it was and how it really works, I also discovered something important that there's you, the sovereign being on the planet with direct access to God, direct access to your maker, direct access to your, to your uh, superior power. And then what is next? There's you, there's, excuse me, there's God, right? God is first, then there's you, then there's your family. And then there's government. So in other words, you are above government, not below government. So in this journey, I discovered that the government has a role, but you're the one who gave them that right and that role. You are the one that empowered them. They don't empower you. But through the use of licensing and restrictions of all kinds, regulations of all kinds, they have made people think and even believe that they are under the government, but it is exact opposite. So it was all through the discovery and study of trusts that gave me that access to that information. So then I discover that and I discover the power of the contract. And those of you who don't know this, a trust is nothing more than a contract. It's a contract between the trustee of the trust, who's not you, if you are the beneficiary, 
It's the contract between the trustee of the trust and the beneficiary of the trust. And you do not have to be that person. So it really opens the door to you being able to have control without ownership, uh, which is, you might have heard that from J. Paul Getty, where he said, I don't have to own it if I can control it. And if I can get the benefits from it, I don't have to own it. So that's one of the unique benefits of trusts is there's assets and they are held in that contractual relationship and they could be yielding benefits to you or to your family or to others. And you could get paid for managing those assets. Or you could get paid for owning those assets. So there's really cool things that can happen inside that contract. Well, the cool thing about contracts is they do not have to be published. They do not have to be on public record for everyone to see. So to Dave's point about privacy, you definitely can get that with trusts because you're not out there in the open on public record as someone that has any interest whatsoever in that trust. And by the way, you might not have any interest in that trust. So that's another of the great benefits of trusts is that uh, what is so today may not be so tomorrow. So in other words, if you were a beneficiary today, you might not be a beneficiary tomorrow. You could be removed from that position. You could remove yourself from that position, uh, both in a trustee or successor trustee position. You don't have to be that trustee come the next day. You could even start off as a trustee and resign right away, but on public record, the trustee is right there. Well, the question might become uh, who else might be involved in this trust? So there's a process by which you learn these things. And like I said, with 30 different benefits of trusts, there's a lot of different things that uh, could resonate with you and could benefit you. So while one might not be a big commitment on your part or a big uh, benefit to you on your part, the other may be incredibly beneficial to you. Uh, so you start to take that apart and realize that there's many different benefits of trusts. So I call them the four P's of uh, privacy, protection. Now, why do I say protection? Well, how many of you believe that you would be protected if someone took a run at the asset and that's the only asset that's in there? So as opposed to the attorneys say, let's, uh, let's get an LLC and then you can protect all your assets because it's in that thing called a limited liability company. Uh, well, okay, so it limits the liability of who? You. So if you are the one conducting business as an LLC, you have limited liability, but there's no limit of liability against the stuff that's in that LLC. So anybody can take a run at that LLC and get anything that's in there. So if you have 10, a dozen properties, all of a sudden somebody takes a run at the LLC that owns all of those things and they might get a big fat judgment against that particular entity. So now we run into the other challenge of all this um, opportunity to protect ourselves. And then if we don't do it, we're not protected at all because that first thing that we were talking about today, and that was, if it's in your name, it's in your name. They can come after you, go through you and get to anything in your name. They can attach on public record anything in your name. They can do what's called a list pendants, which means lawsuit pending. And so that means that if you were to go to sell 
any of those assets, mortgage any of those assets, pledge any of those assets as collateral for a loan, oh no, you're going to have to clear this this lawsuit before anybody would allow that asset to be used for collateral. Well, now let's, let's contrast that with a trust. Let's say that each one of those 10 properties is in a separate trust. And let's say that you needed to raise some money to defend yourself against an attack on one of the trusts. Well, you could do that because the other properties are not attached at all. There's no list pendants against those properties. There's no lawsuit pending against those properties. So as a result, those properties are free to be used uh, for collateral, to raise money, to sell, to, to do anything you wanted to with them. Uh, so separating your assets from yourself is step one. S separating your assets from one another is step two. <laughs> Don't put all your eggs in one basket because that basket can be attacked. And so that the fact that you've got one asset in one basket, that is just fine because we can, like a seahorse, we can grow a new leg, we can grow new appendages if we lose one. But if uh, we lose all of them, it's hard to come back. And Richard's story earlier about losing a $6 million portfolio should be very instructive to everyone on here because that is a powerful, powerful lesson. Uh, and you make a mistake. Fortunately, he wasn't wiped out of the game because of that, but it certainly wiped him out for years and wiped out years worth of work that it took to get to that $6 million portfolio. Can you just imagine what that took to create that 56 properties, all of a sudden it's gone in one fell swoop, all because there was some, uh, there was some steps not taken and there were some benefits not taken advantage of. And the mistake that Richard made is a common one where people learn okay, these trusts, man, they're awesome. They're beneficial. However, I don't want to trust anybody else. So I'm going to trust myself to be the trustee of the trust. Well, big, huge mistake as Richard shared. Yeah, right? You should not be in there anywhere that you're, you're going to be able to take advantage of the benefits of the trust. Uh, you, you, you can be a manager, but don't be the trustee and don't be even the beneficiary. Uh, someone else or someone else's could be the beneficiary of your trust. Well, one of the great things about a land trust is that the beneficiaries can be changed. And it's a contract between the trustee and the beneficiaries. So beneficiaries trustees can be changed. Now, as that process is going on, realize that you have control without ownership on public record. So the public is seeing what? They're seeing the name of the trust and the name of the trustee. That's it. Now, if they wanted to serve a lawsuit, they have to go find that trustee. Well, where is that trustee? Well, they might be next door. They might be in Alaska. And that makes it difficult for someone to navigate their theft of property. Now, when I say theft of property, I, want, I mean that sincerely because uh, if you are doing business the way we teach at Street Smart, we are teaching you to do good business, do authentic business, do the right thing, do the good thing, take care of people, give people opportunities. And uh, through our doing good while doing well, that's exactly the design that all of you should be and can be doing good business. There is plenty, plenty out there that you don't have to 
beg, borrow, and steal. You can, you can uh, absolutely be truly blessed in this business. There's plenty, plenty, plenty. So with that in mind, then you go about doing good business, period. Now, do you, if you are doing good business, as Richard said, do you have to protect yourself? Absolutely. Why do you have to protect yourself? Because there's predators out there. There's folks that don't want to do what you did to get what you got. They just want what you've got. So you think to yourself, all right, so who am I in the matter? Well, many of you raised your hand earlier and you said and admitted you've got assets in your own name right now. That's the starting point. <laughs> we got to get assets out of your name and we got to train you on things that uh, that Richard shared. You know, for example, don't be the trustee of a trust that you're the beneficiary of as well. <laughs> you know, what did you do? You created a legal thing called merger of interests. And when you create a merger of interests, then you have effectively negated the trust. So it's very important legally that you separate you from those assets. And that is a very solid black line. There's you, and then there's the assets over there held by what? Someone else, someone else. And if they want to get those assets, they got to go find the someone else and they got to sue the someone else. Uh, they might be suing you too, but they got to go find that and serve that and bring that someone else into the lawsuit uh, if they want those assets. So what does this do? Well, it has many benefits from a lawsuit standpoint, because really, if you think about it, lawsuits are extremely expensive and, and that process of going through this little experience with this particular ownership type is much more expensive than going after you personally for assets that are in your name, right? Because they already got you and they, they got a direct access through you to those assets that are named on public record. And they've got a prohibition against you being able to use those assets to raise money to protect yourself. So these are very important aspects of that first thing that we talked about, about your having assets in your own name. And then next, learning that you got to separate not only yourself from your assets, but your assets from one another. All right. So we've established that privacy is a good thing. We've established that not having your name as an owner of anything, even if it was an owner in the past, that's okay because legally that has nothing to do with the matter. If you used to own it, big deal. That doesn't prove anything legally. Legally, it has to be in the, they have to sue the entity that owns that asset. And whether they try to drag you into it or not has nothing to do with that entity that owns that asset. They have to get to that entity and sue that entity for whatever that entity did wrong in their eyes, right? Or their attempt to steal, <laughs> whatever the case may be. So insulating and isolating yourself from your assets is, is part of that privacy aspect as well. So we've talked about protection so that people can't come directly and they can't get all your eggs in one basket. Now let's talk about profits. And one thing I mentioned earlier is I was forced to learn about trusts because the government forced me to. They created a law that interrupted my business plan. They created a law that made it difficult for me to take over existing financing on property that was a perfect business model. Oh my gosh, when you don't have to go to the bank and qualify for loans. How many of you love the idea of not going to banks and not qualifying for loans and yet buying assets, right? How many of you love that idea? Isn't that a beautiful thing? So 
yeah, yes, and you can go to you can go to chat and communicate with me as well. In fact, I love that uh, because you're thinking, you're realizing just how powerful and important this is. So, as a result of learning that we had a process that we could protect ourselves, and we could also allow a seller to place their assets into their trust and. Instead of buying the asset, we could buy something that the trust produced, which is a beneficial interest. So rather than buying real estate, that real estate is in that trust. So that's already a done deal. When the seller places their asset into their trust, that's a done deal. Now, what has produced by that seller creating that is a beneficial interest. That beneficial interest can be sold. That beneficial interest can be pledged as collateral for a loan. So that, in other words, that beneficial interest is what has the value. Now, let's make this point that there's many different trusts out there. So we, we have the LLCs, corporations, limited partnerships that kind of like the world uses. And then there's a select few that know about trusts. Well, now there's a subdivision inside trusts as well. So there's about 30 different kinds of trusts. So now we get to this, this other subdivision called a land trust trust. So a land trust is different and unique to other types of trusts. So again, what is a trust? A trust is a contract. That contract has value. That contract establishes a relationship. It establishes who's going to hold the property for the benefit of another or others. Okay. So given that contract, what could that contract have? Well, that contract could have some unique features. For example, that contract could flip the script on how trusts are done. So a typical trust, the trustee is in charge. The trustee has the control over the purse strings. The trustee can do anything the trustee wants to do. That's in one kind of trust. But in a land trust, it's the beneficiary who has the control. The beneficiary tells the trustee or the director what to do. Now, the director is another role. I won't get into that today. But here's the point that the, the beneficiary is the driver of the train. The beneficiary tells the trustee sell the property or mortgage the property, pledge the property as collateral. And uh, that's it. That's it. And the beneficiary can tell the trustee to do that because of that unique feature called a land trust, that unique type of trust. All right. So what is it that gives us a great benefit here? Because if you're a beneficiary, you really can tell the trustee. The trustee can't steal your assets. The trustee can't control the purse strings. The trustee can't do anything until told to do so by the beneficiary. How many of you love that type of trust? Is that a beautiful thing? All right. So now as you're thinking this through, the next piece of the puzzle, so we've got that, that profits that can come from a seller choosing to place their property into a land trust. And then as the beneficiary, the seller can choose to sell the asset that they have, which now is no longer the real estate. It's the beneficial interest of the trust. Now, why is that? Because that contract says that the beneficiary does not own the real estate. That beneficiary only owns an interest in the avails and proceeds, which may flow from the trust. So when that 
comes down instantly, by the way, to the beneficiary, then the beneficiary can do anything the beneficiary wants to with their avails and proceeds, right? So the avails are the benefits. Uh, for example, tax benefits that may flow from the trust owning the real estate. There's tax benefits. Those flow right through the trust to the beneficiary. So now the beneficiary can use those to offset other income. What a great thing. All right. The next thing is that that trustee, that beneficiary rather, can have uh, can use that interest in any way they want to. They can sell part of that interest or they could sell all that interest to what? Someone else. So now the someone else in our world is a personal property trust. So the personal property trust comes along and purchases that beneficial interest from the seller who placed their property into their trust. So it's the seller's trust and then the seller might choose to sell their personal property, which is the beneficial interest of the trust. And who are they going to sell it to? They're going to sell it to another trust, not to you, but to another trust. So if someone gets through the land trust, what are they going to find? Another trust. And they're going to have to now go find that trustee and uh, who that beneficiary might be. So it creates, back to that other P called protection, the protection comes from the benefits of if the one trust is sued, what they're going to find is another trust. And when you couple the benefits of the land trust and the personal property trust, boom, you are off to the races because it makes it so difficult for someone and expensive for someone to come after you. Now, again, we teach this for the good, not for the bad. So we expect you to do good business, not say, oh, I can get away with something because I'm using this type of vehicle. We don't want that. We want you to use this for your own personal good. And by the way, that's the fourth P, and that is probate avoidance, a benefit that is not provided by any other entity. So if you've, if you've lived probate before, how many of you have lived probate before from a family member? You had to be the one to deal with probate. Well, that, as anybody who's lived it can express, it is difficult, it's challenging, it's costly, it's confusing. You often have to incorporate uh, attorneys you have to get, <laughs> you have to get judges. You have to use a different court called probate court, which takes the asset away from the dead person and gives it to the rightful living heir. What pain that is, um, and it can be avoided. It can be avoided when your parents, your grandparents, they place their property into trust for estate planning purposes, boom. The instant of death, where they were the primary beneficiary, the instant of death, it passes to the named beneficiaries per contract by operation of law. So as a result of that, we don't have to go to court. We don't have to use attorneys. We don't have delay. We don't have expense. We've got an amazing opportunity because of that other feature of the trust. Now, I've only touched on four benefits of the 30 benefits of trust, but it is a very powerful thing. And it's something that, that I want you all to truly experience. Um, the reason I want you to experience it is not for a personal gain on my side. It is because it's personal gain to you and to your family. And this is something that by setting it up this way, you're actually gifting and giving a wonderful, wonderful inheritance that's over and above the actual money and property that you're going to be passing on to your heirs. The fact itself that the trust was used 
is already going to be a huge benefit. And by the way, even if you just have a vehicle, just have a bank account, just have your own personal residence, it's worth it. It's worth it to learn this. It's worth it to do this because you are going to be gifting a wonderful thing to your heirs. So not only do you need to be thinking about this for you and your heirs, you need to be thinking about this for your parents and your grandparents, because if they have not availed themselves of this wonderful thing called trusts, then, well, you're the one that's going to have to actually deal with the probate and or there's going to be a family breakdown where everyone is going to have something to say about everything. <laughs> and as a result, uh, you end up being in a quagmire where you may not end up with anything as a result. All right. So I want to give you guys a couple of things today. Uh, I'm going to give you some gifts, and these gifts are fantastic. In fact, uh, let me share screen here for just a sec and go to this uh, and share a slide. Let's see here. Oh, there it is. All right. So, uh, MaximumAssetShield.com forward slash, I guess it didn't copy, but forward slash contest, forward slash contest. So we're going to create a contest here, and we want you guys to benefit from what I'm teaching you today, and we want you to benefit in a very profound way. Uh, that means that what I'm giving you is an opportunity uh, that's what happened. It went to the bottom instead of at the top where I had saved it as contest. There it is. Okay. All right. MaximumAssetShield.com forward slash contest. Now, when you go to that site, you're going to be able to enter a drawing for a free ticket to Maximum Asset Shield. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Not only can you get a free ticket, you can get a second free ticket for your spouse, your significant other, or your 100% business partner. Uh, and not only that, if you have pre-registered for MAS, meaning today you can register for Maximum Asset Shield, then <laughs> because of that, you're actually going to be able to qualify for a $2,000 cash bonus. Now that means that that's only open to those that have registered uh, for Maximum Asset Shield for those that are coming for the first time. So those of you that uh, have been before, you are what's considered to be a repeater and you're in the contest too. So repeaters can participate and uh, and definitely get the opportunity to get yourself to MAS. Now, those of you that have been before, well, I can assure you that you should be there again. And the reason is that there's a lot to learn when it comes to trust. There's a lot to learn when it comes to trust. And uh, you heard what you heard when you heard it, and you didn't hear other things that I said that you just weren't prepared to hear, maybe because you were thinking about what you heard and how you were going to implement that, and you didn't hear what I said in the next paragraph or the next session. So it's important to be able to repeat this class. And so if you've been before, you can come again, uh, definitely as a repeater. Now, what are you going to learn at Maximum Asset Shield? The answer is we're going to go through the whole process of what trusts are, how they work, and how you fit in. So what I want you to do is bring a deed with you to class, and you sitting at your seat can 
absolutely fill out the paperwork with your own personal situation. You're going to create your own trust name. You're going to create and decide on whom to use as your trustee. We're going to spend a whole session on just the trustee and how to select your trustee and what to do to protect yourself against an unscrupulous trustee. And then we're going to talk about your successor trustee. We're going to learn who to use there. And then we're going to learn about naming strategies for trusts, all kinds of different naming strategies that on public record can benefit you greatly. And then we're going to talk about the document itself, the declaration of trust and land trust agreement. We're going to go over the valuable things that are included in there and really teach and train you on why those things are there, not just words on a paper, not just a contract that's being created, but why is this be created in the way that it's created? And what is the benefit to you of those sentences, those paragraphs, and those documents? Now, again, using your own situation, you're going to create what's called a land trust creation information worksheet. And there in class, we're going to make a lot of decisions including who your beneficiary or beneficiaries might be. Of course, you can change them at any time. The point is you got to get started somewhere. And for most of you, trust is a 100% new information thing. So we got to start with your basic understanding of what it is, how it works, and how you can benefit from it. Now, yes, we are going to talk about LLCs, corporations, limited partnerships, and how they fit with trusts and how you can use what both of these. So if someone were to get through the land trust and the personal property trust, they might find an LLC that they now have to attack. So there's reasons that we can use other entities and uh, definitely create privacy using or create protection using an entity that's out in the open on public record. So we'll be talking about that and contrasting. We'll also be talking about the best states to have those kind of entities in because the states compete against each other. And in that competition, they can they create some very valuable laws that are distinctive and you need to be aware of because these laws are highly beneficial to you if you know about them. And it's just like any law. If you don't know about it, you can't take advantage of it. So it's important to be exposed to that. And then we're going to talk about living trust. So we're going to go through the, the land trust, what it is, how it operates. We're going to go through the six important documents of the land trust, actually fill them out in class, the appointment of trustee, appointment of successor trustee, the declaration of trust and land trust agreement, the instructions to the closing agent, the deed itself that's going to transfer your asset into trust, and the affidavit of trust, the magical affidavit of trust that by being registered on public record, allows you to continue your anonymity and your privacy. So those six documents we're going to do, and we're also going to do a personal property trust. Now, remember that the personal property trust can be the beneficiary of the land trust, but more, the personal property trust is also a vehicle that you can use for your stocks, bonds, mutual funds, bank accounts, CDs, CDUs, motor homes, motor homes, uh, mobile homes, rather, gun collections, coin collections, jewelry collections, and the beneficial interest of a land trust. So there's many different things we can use a personal property trust for. So I want you to learn how to use and do a personal property trust. So we're going to do that in class. And you can bring a vehicle title with you to class if you want to transfer a vehicle into trust. And why wouldn't you? Or you're not going to transfer it to a land trust. You're going to transfer it to a personal property trust. And then the third thing you need to learn is how to open a bank account in trust. And there's a process for that. 
and there's the right way and there's the wrong way. And we definitely want to do that. We want to learn, you know, what to record, how to record it on public record. We want to learn about opening bank accounts. We want to learn about transferring titles at the Department of Motor Vehicles. There's many different steps in the process, and we're going to go over every one of those so that you are equipped when you leave class with those already done. Now, the third trust we're going to cover is a living trust that could be the beneficiary of your land trust and personal property trust. And then the other trust we're going to cover is something called the elite trust. And the elite trust is to flip the coin of the land trust, meaning it's the exact opposite. It shares the name trust, but it does things that the land trust does not do. And for some of you, that could be highly beneficial. Uh, for example, if you're a W-2 wage earner and you would like to protect a lot of that income and you would like to avoid a lot of the taxation on that regular W-2 income, you can do that using the elite trust and foundations. So we're going to cover what that is, how it works, give you an opportunity to learn more about that. But wait, there's more. We're also going to talk about borrowing money using trusts. We're going to talk about uh, insurance and the land trust. We're going to talk about your homestead exemption and how you can continue to maintain that homestead exemption. And we're going to talk about some other great things that, uh, that I'm not going to disclose here but it's definitely some great stuff in class. Also, I've got a CPA uh, that's coming, a master CPA that has knows and uses and loves trusts. And he's going to tell you about tax benefits and about amazing tax benefits that you're probably not aware of and that are in the tax code. So he's actually going to cite the tax code and show you the things that you can take advantage of. So all of that is why it's a four-day event <laughs> because it, there's a lot to cover in that four days and there's a lot to be able to navigate during that time. So uh, I want to invite all of you to be part of that. And as a gift, as a bonus for coming, you're going to get this marvelous thing called autofill. So at your at your seat, you're actually going to be working through the manual and filling out documents by hand, but we're going to give you some magical software that all you have to do is fill out one page, press a button, and it automatically autofills all of your documents so you can create as many trusts as you want to for yourself and be able to separate those assets from one another, like I said, one of the things we want to do is we don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket. We want to have different baskets, separate baskets to separate the assets from one another. And that's exactly why it's designed the way it is. So you want to have an easy way of doing that. And that is this magnificent autofill that allows you to fill out that one page and automatically autofill all your documents. So that is a brief synopsis of and by the way, there's many more benefits and bonuses that come with uh, coming to the class. Now, when you go to MaximumAssetShield.com forward slash contest, I want you to know that there are some gifts there. And when you partake in those gifts, you get an extra entry into the contest. So we actually want to gift you some things and allow you to learn about more. Now, some of you know that you want to go ahead and join us for Maximum Asset Shield. You can go to MaximumAssetShield.com and register right away. The other way you can do that is to call 1-800-578-8580 and talk to Dennis, and he'll get you registered. And the reason you want to register now is because it's part of the contest. Those of you that are already registered, this is important, those of you that are already registered, 
get not only the entry into the contest, but you also qualify for the $2,000 extra bonus. Uh, and that the only way that's going to happen is for those of you that are pre-registered. So you do have to register in order to take advantage of that. Now, you might want a payment plan. Well, we're doing a two-pay, so you can do a half now, this month, and half in October before the event. So that gives you an opportunity. Uh, you know, I was just talking to my MX last night, and they say, okay, your, your statement closed uh, yesterday. So that means open to buy, loving it. <laughs> so uh, you might have open to buy this month and open to buy next month before the event. Definitely now is the time also to book your flights uh, because, of course, it's going to be cheaper. I couldn't believe I booked a, a flight the other day. It was so cheap, like $98. Good grief. Wow. I could, I was just like, wow, I can't believe it's so cheap. And the other thing is to get your room at the hotel, at the host hotel that we've got. We've got a room block there. If you wait too long, you don't get to take advantage of that room block discount. So we got a lot of good things for you and reasons, good reasons for you to go ahead and join us and get registered for MAS. I hope that I've given you a lot of valuable information today. I am going to open it up to questions now, give you an opportunity. If there's any questions about the event, let's get those out of the way. Uh, any, what am I going to cover? Uh, oh, the pricing right now, you qualify for the early bird discount, you do have to register uh, forward slash early bird. Uh, so the the uh, maximum asset hey, shield. Hey, uh, hey, Lou, yep. Lou I, I don't think it's uh, forward slash early bird. I think if they just go to the event site, maximumassetshield.com, and if they, if they want to enroll online, it'll ask if you have a promo code. The promo code is early bird. There you Other go. Otherwise, you can call the office. The promo code is early bird. Thank you, Richard. Uh, the promo code is early bird. And yeah, we've been putting it out on some of the email marketing. So definitely wanted to give you an opportunity to take advantage of that extra thousand dollars off that we have going right now uh, for the entire four day event. Now, remember this. I only do this event one time per year. So this is your shot and it's October 12, 13, 14, 15. So that four days in October are going to be very, very valuable to you and your family and your parents and your grandparents. You probably should bring them with you. They should learn this themselves. They should know about it. They should understand why it's a good idea. Or maybe they will fund you to come to the event and bring it back to them to, to teach them about it. Either way, incorporating your parents and your grandparents, I'm telling you that that's a benefit to you. You will never have to go through the pain and suffering of probate if you'll do what I'm telling you to do. And the most valuable thing you could do is not have things in your own name and Definitely not to have your parents or your grandparents, any inheritance that might be coming your way. Let's make sure that that is in trust before you inherit it so you don't go through that pain and suffering. All right. So now I'm going to open it up to questions and any questions about the event and any questions about trusts. Uh, someone asked, is it in downtown Atlanta? Where uh, ab About where is it, Lou? Uh, it's near we're the airport, At right? the airport. Yep, we always make it easy for you to come in. We always contract with a hotel that has a shuttle. So if you want to fly in and catch that hotel's shuttle, there's a special area at the Atlanta airport for shuttles, and they just come every 15 minutes, call the hotel and confirm. But uh, definitely they... Uh, We'll take you back to the hotel and you'll be just fine for the whole event because we're going to be sequestered. I don't know if you've been to a Lou Brown event before, but we get started about 830 in the morning and we go to about 730 at night. So I want to help you take advantage of as much learning as you possibly can and give you as many valuable lessons as I can. Uh, so therefore, 
we have it uh, as an open uh, day of learning all three days. Now, the, the fourth day, we end about 530. Uh, so there, you if you've got a late afternoon, evening flight uh, from Atlanta, that's, that's no worries. You'll be able to make it to that. And with the shuttle coming regularly, you'll be able to get back over to the airport. And uh, I navigate that airport all the time. And if I'm there an hour before the flight, I'm always on that flight. So uh, we've so go ahead and book your flights, but get registered first uh, to mark your spot and start getting your additional entries into the contest. Because you're not just going to have one entry into the contest; you're going to have multiple opportunities to have multiple entries into the contest. And we will be doing a drawing on that on the 21st of September. So those of you that are registered are going to be included in that drawing. And we're going to have it live and in person uh, on Zoom, that is. Uh, so you'll be able to see the, uh, the drawing and you'll be able to see who, who wins. Richard, do we have any other questions? Uh, yeah. Um, is it okay to ask for the name of the hotel room? Well, basically, if 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 we we announced it, we'd have people showing up who are not enrolled. So once you enroll, you'll get you'll immediately get, get the uh, <laughs> the hotel information. And I'm glad right? you mentioned that, Richard, because it's valuable. It's important that you you don't just show up. We print the manuals only for the number of folks that are there, and we reserve spaces. We reserve space in the room, all of these things and distinctions of setting up the event, uh, all of those have to be done based upon pre-registration. So we don't want people just showing up. And uh, Shauna asked, if you have a mortgage on your house, can you still put it into a trust? Absolutely, Shauna. I'm so glad you asked that question because that's exactly why they designed the law the way they did. So I mentioned the Garn St. Germain Federal Depository Institutions Act. And then I read that law and I found the exceptions and way down very deep, it said that the lender is prohibited from calling the loan due upon sale if you are placing your property into your trust, essentially for estate planning purposes, then the lender is prohibited from calling the loan due. Well, that was designed for you, Shauna. That was designed for every one of you that have a home with a mortgage that you can indeed transfer the deed to the property into trust and not have to be worried about the lender calling the loan due. And guess what, Shauna? That might be your first subject to transaction where you're actually going to learn on your own property how to do subject to because you're going to transfer your own house to a trust and it's going to be subject to that existing loan and the lender is prohibited from calling the loan due. How cool is that? So thank you for asking that question. Richard, do you have any others that you're seeing in the chat or Bruce? Uh, no, I don't I don't see any in the chat, but I think this is a great time for people just to unmute themselves and speak up and ask questions since they got your ear. Absolutely. Happy to answer any questions you might have on trusts, land trusts, personal property trusts, living trusts, to really get your head around what you're learning and how you're learning it. Um, and always think about yourself. Think about, you know, how does this apply to me? What do I need to do? Uh, what are my steps in this process? Is this a good idea for me? I've got this, that, and the other thing is, should I worry about trust? Is this important? I heard that <laughs> is it, is it important? <laughs> it's probably the most important thing, Lou, that people aren't aware of. So I, I applaud you for spreading the awareness. But you have to understand that building building your wealth and building your assets is great. It's fun. And, and But what's more important is you actually keep them. Now, we do have a, 
couple I questions. See. One of the questions is from Gerald is if your parent have you under their trust and you have your personal under a different trust, is it on record you own what your parents put you under? Uh, Gerald, no. If you're Uh, you hear me? Yeah, Lou, you cut out there. Start again with the answer. For the beneficiary of the trust, that is yours. So your parents might have themselves listed as the primary beneficiaries, but then it comes to you perhaps as the successor beneficiary. And don't believe what the attorneys tell you. They might tell you that you should go ahead and probate the trust because there might be some open uh, bills and expenses that might come back later. Do not believe that nonsense. It is nonsense to, to line the attorney's pockets. So it, it, once that trust, uh, that is my opinion, that is my opinion, right? Uh, that when you place your property in trust, uh, it is my opinion that you don't need any other processes and procedures uh, that in fact it passes at the instant of the death of the primary we just saw this happen recently when queen elizabeth the second of england um, died the instant she died prince charles became king charles what is the legal establishment for that? It's a thing called a trust. And you're dealing with a family that has like 4,000 trusts. So the Queen of England owns stuff the globe over, the world over. And of course, because of the monarchy and the passing of that, it instantly passed at the instant of her death to Charles. And then, of course, it goes down in the succession. Well, in America, we have a little bit more freedom. <laughs> we can choose who our beneficiaries are. And, uh, and so we don't have to make it even a blood heir. We can make it a charity. We can make it a friend. We can make it family. Anybody we want to, to make it an, uh, the, as a beneficiary, we can do that. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, Gerald, that is personal and private. And uh, you, when you become the recipient of that, by the way, that trust could even stay in place and you could just leave it in place. You could even change the trustee of that trust if it's the type of trust that allows that. Because there's other trusts that I will be talking about. I call it the elite trust. That doesn't allow you to have the power to change that trustee. Uh, so that is a very powerful trust because you can control from the grave using the elite trust in addition to getting some incredible tax benefits. All right, so I see another question here. Will a transfer affect a property with a hard money loan? So once again, when you transfer your property into trust, for estate planning purposes, the lender is prohibited from calling the loan due. So you do have control over the deed to the property. But when you transfer that deed, just know that it comes with a writer. It comes with, uh, with baggage. And that baggage is the loan. Why is the loan baggage on the deed? Because the deed was already pledged as collateral to that lender. So when you change the name of ownership on that deed, well, that loan is just going to come naturally over into the trust as an obligation of that asset, not of the trust, but of the asset. The asset still is encumbered by that loan. That does not strip away the loan at all. The loan comes with the transfer of the deed. And Bob Jansen, I see here, says, 
I have a house in a living trust. Do I put the house in a land trust? And then the beneficiary is the living trust. Bob, you certainly can do that. And the reason that some people do exactly that is because they've got multiple properties. So they want to put each property into its own land trust, but they want to have a collection point of those beneficial interests. And so that filter collection point can be the living trust. So you can keep your living trust. You've got your living trust. You can keep your living trust and it just becomes a beneficiary of the land trust and or the personal property trust. Then you have your living trust in place. Great question, Bob. All right, I see Luis asks, uh, will a transfer into a trust affect a property with a hard money loan? We answered that. And uh, can, can I get a copy of this recording? Well, Mookie, I'm glad you asked that question because we are going to be replaying this on Thursday night at 8 p.m. All right. So Steve Weber asks, uh, what if there is a tax lien on your residence? Can that be put in a trust or if we put the residence in trust, does that help or not? Um, sure, tax liens are different. Steve, the tax lien comes with the property. So in other words, once that deed transfers from, let's say, your name into the trust name, then whatever liens were on that deed from before come with it. You're not able to strip, strip those out or strip those off at all, just like a mortgage. You cannot strip off anything that's already there. Now, let's go to another point, Steve, and, and another reason for trusts is, let's say that somebody was coming at you and you had already transferred your properties into this variety of land trusts, and then somebody gets a judgment against you personally. Guess what? that judgment will not attach to any of those land trusts. So the same is true with, with, you know, you have a car accident, anything, anything that would come against you personally, since you don't own anything personally, well, bring it on, baby. Because the rest of the story is those various trusts uh, could have different beneficiaries than you and that does not connect you to any of those assets. So that is another uh, unasked question, Steve, but I, I wanted to add to the benefits of uh, you're using the trust. Now, Grace uh, asked me, uh, can we put property on a trust? Uh, this was a direct message, but I think this would benefit everyone, Grace. So can we put property in trust after buying it via a self-directed IRA? And the answer, Grace, is yes, you can. So in other words, the IRA would deed the property to the land trust and the self-directed IRA would then become a beneficiary of the land trust. So you get your privacy, your protection, your probate avoidance, uh, by using the trusts, and then it simply is owned by that IRA, meaning the beneficiary of the trust is the IRA. Um, and Richard comments, a recording will be made available if it is successful, <laughs> and reviewing it might earn you another contest entry. Oh, there's, a, there's an interesting point, Richard. Uh, Joe Hartpence says, Signing up for the event. Yeah, baby. Good for you, Joe. And uh, Joe says the promo code is not working. So we will get on that, Joe. But now that we know that you want the event, Dennis will be in touch and get you signed up. Thanks so much, Joe. Uh, Joe, we are looking forward to seeing you there. It is going to be monumental, uh, life-altering. Uh, and by the way, we only have a few seats left. Uh, people pre-register for this event sometimes a year in advance. So we have a lot of folks that already had committed to this event. So we only have, and what we're sharing with you is the opportunity to come because the seating is limited in the room that we have. Why is that? 
because we want to make sure that all of you get the opportunity to ask questions, get personalized attention. I'll have my coaches there to support you in getting through the documents and understanding better if something needs to be re retaught to you like during lunches and dinners and things like that you've got opportunities to do that live at the event so we definitely want you to have that chance and once the seats are gone unfortunately it will be filled at that point there there won't be enough space because we're pre-ordering manuals and things like that by the way you know you guys are are definitely asking questions that I want to make sure are included in the manual. So thank you for that as wait. Um, Ron says, wait, I just got here. What's the promo code, please? <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, the pro, uh, yeah, we got a report that the promo code is not working. So uh, it's supposed to be early bird, but I just, someone reported it wasn't working. So I just tried it and it's not working. So uh, there, I put the phone number to the office in, in there if you want to enroll online or on, over the phone. Uh, but we'll work on getting that, that working. It's great. And Ron, uh, Dennis is on here. So the uh, 800 number is working. And just go ahead and give a call and we'll get you into the event for sure and get you pre-registered and get you also the credit for uh, having pre-registered and the additional $2,000 uh, opportunity that you got. So imagine that you're going to be uh, drawn only from people that are pre-registered for this event. So it's a, it's a, the odds are very, very good for you uh, on winning. Uh, so definitely get as many entries as you can by going to that site you, you're going to see other ways that you can get extra entries into the um, into the drawing, but you do have to register in order to be included in the drawing. Number one, number two, you have to be pre-registered in order to qualify for the extra two thousand uh, dollar bonus. Remember this: the grand prize is not one but two tickets to the millionaire jump start for yourself and your spouse significant other or 100% business partner plus a $2000 rebate essentially that we are not only you're going to get a free ticket number 1 and number 2 but we're also going to give you $2000 free to use any way you would like how and and that? and a thousand up to a thousand dollars to cover your travel. Did you mention that for the grand prize winner? I thought that was part of the two thousand dollars. No, no. If if you uh, are the grand prize winner, because we only have one, and we're going to have some secondary prizes. But if you're the grand prize winner and you get the, the, those two tickets, and uh, you're also going to get a private lunch with you, Lou. At the event, there we only have like, you know, think of how many meals, lunches, and dinners you have in a four day event, and and some of those are already taken. Yeah, they're they're going to get one of those, so they get a private consultation with you over a meal, and you know how valuable that would be, right? Well, I've made people very significant money uh, at those <laughs> private consultations, so I do know how valuable that is. <laughs> in in fact. Normally, next week, we'll do another uh, webinar, but I don't think there's going to be any of those uh, consultations left. Normally, what you did last year, Lou, is you said to like the first seven people, because again, there's limited space. I think Dennis told me there's only like a couple left. So is if you enroll now, you might want be able to qualify for one of those free consultations just by enrolling early. And again, if you win the contest, you get refunded plus that $2,000 bonus. But the winner also gets $1,000 to cover their travel. You just submit your expenses within 30 days. And and so basically, you know, your meals, your your, your airfare and your hotel and all that up to $1,000 is paid by the man. <laughs> yeah, baby. Man, this is just getting sweeter all the time. <laughs> and Lou's going, did I agree to this? <laughs> You know, one of the great things about uh, the the event itself and being in person is that direct access. 
So when you've got your questions, people often come to me, pull me to the side. I got this special situation. Tell me about what I ought to do in my situation. What would you do in this situation? And I'll say, well, what I would do in your situation is this. And uh, obviously, what we want to do this in such a way that is beneficial to you. Uh, and we want to make sure that you get your personal questions, your personal situation dealt with. And one of the great tragedies is to know about trust, but not to use trust. So we want to make sure that not only do you learn about them, but you actually are implementing them. It's that important, y'all. It's that important. And Richard's share earlier today about you know losing a six million dollar portfolio of 56 properties couldn't be more appropriate really for all of you to realize that all of us have everything on the line unless we take steps to make sure it's not on the line and we not only learn it but we do it and we do it correctly to make sure that we're not going to have these issues in the future this is not a sometimes whenever thing. This is a right now thing. And I encourage each and every one of you to take advantage of all the steps of this process and absolutely mark your calendar, clear your calendar. If your daughter's getting married, have her reset the date. This is too important. <laughs> Seriously. And by the way, if you do have a conflict on that date, let us know about that we've got a solution for you as well. Uh, so take advantage of this today because you do get the two pay plan. That means half now, half in October, and number one. Number two, you get entered into the contest and hey, the contest is now up to, what is that? $9,000 worth of, of value? Just no, no, no. The, the, look, the book, hey, look. Yeah, I know you're busy. You like, I can't believe how busy you are. You <laughs> give so much value. You're like supporting people like every day of the week almost live. <laughs> but the the pet the boot camp package, the training, the four-day training package alone is worth over ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Plus, there's about three, four, five thousand dollars worth additional stuff you get as a grand prize winner. So even if you didn't win and you enrolled, you're getting you know the boot camp ticket, uh, the software, um, the the special workshops that you have, your auto, yeah, the autofill software, uh, yeah, you add all that up, it's worth just the ticket alone is worth over ten thousand dollars if you just bought it retail. Amen. What a great thing. Well, we definitely are here to support you guys. We want to see you win and be successful. I'm looking. All right, and we got. Uh, some comments and they're working on clearing my schedule now ron carruthers good for you smart man congratulations brilliant uh luis says when will this help event be held again i am unable to to attend this time well luis you definitely want to call in and talk with Dennis because we have a solution for you even if you can't attend live we've got a solution all right, and let's see. Uh, Dennis is connecting with several folks now. Grace Alvarez says, what if we can't find the original deed to bring to the event? Oh, Grace, I'm glad you asked that question. It's on public record. How cool is that? That's one of the reasons they created public record because people did exactly that, Grace. They lost the deeds to properties. And so they created the superior court of your county and the superior court of your county has that recording. Uh, so definitely you can, sometimes you can access it online. Uh, sometimes you have to go there in person to get it. Or if you have a relationship with a title company, they could get it for you. So there's a multitude of ways that you can access that deed, but definitely you'll want to have a copy of that because it's got something important in it. Grace, 
called a legal description. The legal description of the property that you want to transfer into trust is right there on that deed. So that's why it's so important. Yeah. Do not yeah. have, to have. And by the way, all of you, you do not have to bring your original with you to class. You can bring a copy. That's just fine. It does not have to be the original original. <laughs> yeah. hey, Lou, would you would you agree that the only reason you didn't want a copy of the deed is because you have to get that exact legal and you have to get an exact name on title? 100%. So that's the reason that when you've got that deed directly in front of you, you've got that legal description right on there. And I'll even tell you how to use the existing deed to get the legal description to attach to your um, to your trust. Uh, Stephen Myers. Yeah, baby. Okay. I'm signing up for MAS. Look forward to seeing you, Lou. Yeah, baby. Boom. Ron says, thank you, everyone. Uh, awesome. Stephen. Stephen is an awesome guy. I'm really looking forward to seeing you, Stephen. Bring your son too. That's a smart move. All right. And uh, Steve Weber says, not my daughter's wedding that conflicts, but pretty close. <laughs> so I'll call Dennis. <laughs> but Steve, one of the things God created is a plane. So we can just leave one event and go right to the other. So that's, that's, that's perfect. And I'm glad you're going to be able to make it. Uh, we have been able to support people in a number of different ways. Dennis knows those ways. So we want to make sure that each and every one of you uh, have the opportunity to not miss this one time per year event because hey once I do it it's done we do record it so talk with Dennis about other options if you can't be there but we definitely want you to be there if you can be there because that's when you're going to be able to consume the information directly to your own personal self and personal situation and get the best benefit for yourself and your family. So thank you for being here today, everyone. I hope you got a lot of value and definitely looking forward to seeing each and every one of you personally live there at the event. And Richard, thank you for being, uh, not only being an MC today, but also to, uh, to share your story. It's a powerful story and one that I think is a, a real eye opener that not only can it happen? Not only have we seen headlines about other people that it's happened to, but hey, we got somebody in the family that it's happened to and really that um, that was willing to open up and share that uh, his recommendation. Well, you tell him your recommendation, Richard. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, again, you don't think it's going to happen to you. And that, because again, I, I think positive, right? I, I focus on what I want and I, I, and I'm pretty resilient. So I, I figure I can handle anything. I lost two years of my life. When that happened to me, I was numb, Lou, for two years because I couldn't figure out how I could possibly avoid that. In retrospect, asset protection strategies that you teach would have handled it for me. I was just too bold and confident that no one's ever going to come after me. So I didn't follow the rules. Didn't follow the rules. It's a great lesson. And all of us know how it's easy to put things off. We know about procrastination. So for some of us, it's our best friend. <laughs> so, so, you know, put it off. Oh, I'll get around to that one. Ah, I don't need that. Ah somebody else i'll hire somebody to do it that's another well, well, well no here's the deal i know exactly what you're going to do at your event you're you're setting everybody up but here's the deal you get it set up in four days and then with and then you with the instruction and the software it's very simple to protect everything going forward so this is going to help you forever so yeah, Absolutely. the sooner the, sooner the better. better. Someone asked, when's the next time you're going to do this live event? Next year. In fact, how many times have you done this event, Lou? This is my 20th year, Richard. This is my 20th year of doing this four-day event. I used to do it in a couple of days, and then it was three days. And I said, you know, there's just so much information, and really people need the consumption side of things. They need to be able to not only hear it, not only see it, but to do it. 
And so I created it in 20 years ago, I created it into a four day event. Um, and we did used to do it twice, a, twice a year, but I said, I got too many other things to teach. I can't just teach trusts. And so I got to give people an opportunity to learn these other things as well. And we created into uh, the three four day events that uh, we still do to this day, 20 years later. So I love to give people this opportunity to, to take advantage of something that changed my life. I can tell you for sure that it changed my life when I started learning about these in 1982, 83 and started teaching them in 1985 and started uh, showing others what to do and how to do it in 1986 and been doing it ever since. So uh, not only have I been doing the four day for 20 years, but I've been teaching folks uh, for uh, 35 years how to use these trusts. And it is a hidden secret. It's a hidden gem. So you might wonder why everyone else is not doing it. Well, the reason is because it's a secret. It's hidden from view. And we all know and have experienced how things, the media, they don't share with us everything that we could know and allow us to make our own decisions. They hide things from us on purpose, with purpose. They don't want us to know. And unfortunately, Trust is one of the things that is held from view. It is reserved for the elites. And in fact, there's not a lot of attorneys that even know about trusts. And I wanted to make that final comment that sometimes we want to hand off our duties, obligations to others and say, okay, you're an attorney. You know what to do. Just do it. Well, that's fine in other legal matters. But when it comes to burying the bones, which is what trusts are, it allows you to bury the bones in the yard. And just like a dog buries the bones, they know where the bones are, but you don't. It's a big yard out there. And you're about to bury the bones and you need to know for yourself what you are doing and how you are doing it and why you're making the decisions you're making. And that's why it is not the best to hand it off to a third party because you still don't know what you did. This allows you to know what you did, know how you did it, and know how you can change it if you choose to change it in the future. And that is so important as well. So, uh, all right, Lou, I know we're, we're out of time here, but there's another thing. I know that this you do a lot of three or four day events, several, you know, each year. And that's why you only do this once a year because you're supporting, you know, all that other stuff that you help people with. But this is one of the most attended events every year. Yeah. And I want to invite anybody who has previously attended to take advantage of their benefit. Because what if when you go to the uh, maximumassetshield.com forward slash contest, You'll see the description of the prize package and you'll see which includes the boot camp, right? One of the elements that you always offer in the boot camp ticket is the ability to come back. So instead of paying three thousand or four thousand dollars to come back, you come back for four hundred five hundred bucks and you uh -huh. still get all the updated software, updated documents, updated training forever. And so that's I and I know you probably get a lot of people repeating this, even though it's yeah. Yeah, we do. Uh, people are smart enough to realize that if you watch a movie one time, you didn't see everything. And <laughs> you, know, you can easily prove that by watching a movie a second time. And you pick up all kinds of things you didn't see the first time. And you go, wow, that was right there in front of my eyes, but I didn't even see it. The same thing happens with the subject of trust. So frankly, as many times as you've been is not enough. <laughs> you, you should come back each and every year because it's going to update, refresh, and give you new perspectives that you simply didn't have before because you weren't ready to learn that information. So thank you for making that point, Richard. And it's fun. It is. But believe it or not, <laughs> trusts are fun. And we do have a lot of laughs in there. Uh, and and it's it's kind of like edutainment because uh, there's, there's things in there too that, 
that are, are quite entertaining that, that people enjoy. Uh, but there's, you know, the, the other side of the coin is it's a serious matter and it's smart for you to take advantage of it because it is that serious for your future. All right, everyone. So look forward to seeing you there at the event. Thank you for taking your time today. Hopefully this has been valuable to you and that I've given you some things to ponder and consider about your future and about protecting your assets, your parents' assets, your grandparents' assets, uh, and getting your estate established for your kids and your grandkids as well. So smart move on your part to be here, smart move to get signed up for the event. Thanks again, Richard, and look forward to seeing you guys again soon on the Sunday night call. <laughs> Take care.